Hey everybody, this is example number one for the steel design for beam columns. The problem statement that we have is we have a W10 by 49 beam column shown below. It's pinned at both ends and experiences the given dead and live loads. Bending is about the strong axis and we're asked to determine which AISC specification interaction equation is applicable and if it is satisfactory per LRFD and ASD. And the material is A992 steel. So here's our, here's our beam column. The length is 16 feet, 17 feet and it's pinned at both ends. We have a dead axial load, axial dead load of 50 kips. We have an axial live load of 100 kips. We have a transverse dead load of 5 kips and we have a transverse live load of 10 kips and it, the transverse load is acting at the center of the beam column. So first we'll take on LRFD and we know that this is a W10 by 49 uh, shape. The effective length is 17 feet and the yield stress uh, is 50 KSI. So we can, get the, we can get the axial compressive strength of this member by using table 4-1 in the AISC manual. So let's go to the AISC manual. Um, so here's table 4-1 and we're in the W10 by 49. And um, so based on 17, 17 feet, we can see that the axial compressive strength for LRFD is 405 kips. So, so 405 kips is the axial strength. And now to get the design moment strength, since bending is about the strong axis, uh, that we can get the design moment strength from the beam design charts in part three of the manual, table 3-10. So the unbraced length is 17 feet. And if we go to table 3-10, um, let's see. So uh, over here, we can find uh, W10 by 49, and then based on the unbraced length of 17 feet, we can see that the uh, that the moment strength, uh, the un the the moment strength is 109 197 uh, kip feet. So we go back to our problem statement. So table 3-10, and that table assumes that the lateral torsional buckling modification factor is 1.0. So the lateral torsional buckling modification uh, factor is 1.0 in that table, but in our case, based on table 3 dash based on table 3-1 in the manual, based on the based on the given uh, based on the loading conditions that we have, it's actually 1.32 when you have uh, let me see, table 3-1. Table 3-1 has values for C sub B for simply supported beams. So since we have a load at the midpoint and there's no lateral bracing along the span, C sub B is going to be 1.32. So we take the moment strength and we multiply it by this C sub B. So this gives us 197 times 1.32 and that's 260 kip feet and then we compare that value to the plastic moment strength which we can calculate is equal to the resistance factor times fy times the modulus plastic modulus and so we see that the plastic modulus, uh, that the plastic strength is smaller than the value that we calculated. The 226.5 feet, kip feet value is smaller than 260. So the, this value, the plastic strength, will be the governing value. So now we have our governing moment strength, and that's 226.5 kip feet, which is also our plastic strength. Now let's take a, take a look at the applied loads. So we have a dead load and live load, axial. So to get the factored load based on ASCE7 load combinations, ASCE7, it's going to be 1.2 times dead load plus 1.6 times live load. So 1.2 times 50 kips plus 1.6 times 100 kips. This gives us 220 kips. And we do the same thing for the transverse load. 1.2 times 5 kips plus 1.6 times 10 kips. This gives us 22 kips is our factor transverse load. 
So we have our factored axial load, factored transverse load, and now we have to get the maximum bending moment. So based on the loading condition, the maximum bending moment will be the transverse load times the length divided by four, QL divided by four. So 22 kips times 17 feet divided by four, this gives us 93.5 kip feet. And now we have to find which AISC equation we're supposed to use which is going to be in, sec in chapter H of the AISC specification. So to do that, we have to take a look at the ratio of the applied of the factored axial load divided by the available strength, the, the axial compressive strength. Um, so we can see that the factored load that we get, that we calculated, was 220 kips, and the axial compressive strength that we found from the table in the manual was 405 kips. So 220 divided by 405 gives us 0 0.54, and that's greater than uh, 0 0.2. That's greater than or equal to 0 0.2. So that means we're going to use equation H1-1A in the AISC specification, chapter H. So now we'll just plug in all the numbers in this equation, equation H1-1A. This is the equation. So the equation is the required strength divided by the available strength and of the required axial strength divided by the available axial strength plus 8 over 9 and then in parentheses the required moment strength divided by the, uh, the divided by the available moment strength with respect to both both the strong axis strong and weak axis so we just plug in the numbers, we already know all the values, so the required strength, the axial required strength is the factored load that we calculate is 220 kips, and then the available strength is 405 kips, we found from the manual, plus 8 over 9, and then the required moment strength is the maximum bending moment that's occurring on this beam column, which we calculated is 93.5 kip feet. And the available moment strength, which is also equal to the plastic moment strength in this case, is 226.5 kip feet. So we calculate this value to be 0 0.91, and that's less than or equal to 1.0. So this beam column is satisfactory per AISC. So in the next video, we'll do the same process, but using the ASD approach. See you in the next video. Thanks.